Welcome to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. My name is Mark Parliament. I'm the Senior Training Consultant for Lennox Learning Solutions. And today we're going to talk about a flue gas analyzer. You know, a lot of guys tell me when, I've been, when I'm out teaching my courses that, you know, they really don't deal with a flue gas analyzer. And I'm telling you, it's probably one of the most overlooked tools in your toolbox that you really want to take a look at. A flue gas analyzer will tell you so many things about what's happening inside the system. You know, our flue gas analyzer is going to tell us how much CO the unit's producing, how much excess air the unit's got, what the temperature of the flue gases are going out of it. And you look at me and go, Mark, that's great, but what do I care? You know, we take a look at something as much as you look at a, you look at a gas furnace and you say to me, Mark, you know, a gas furnace, it burns pretty cleanly. That is true, but there's times when a gas furnace can produce carbon. And carbon is a bad thing, especially when we talk about, you know, a furnace that is a condensing furnace where you have carbon and water come together. They, car they can create carbonic acid, which can heat out, rot out a heat exchanger. But even on an 80% efficient furnace like this, we can actually cause carbon to start building up inside. And the great thing about carbon is that it's an insulator. So we're not going to get proper heat transfer on our systems. So when I take a look at this system, I may not be able to see from the outside that there's carbon built up inside of it. But my flue gas analyzer, it's going to tell me what's happening in the system. It's going to tell me if my furnace is producing CO. It's going to tell me if my flue gases are way too high. It's going to tell me some things that I need to look at. You know, have you ever had that question where you think to yourself, you know, I wonder if that heat exchanger is cracked. And you know, I start looking at it, I, I try and get inside of it. Do I cut the side out? Do I start cutting holes in ductwork? Do I start looking inside of it? How about the first thing we do is we take a look at the flue gas analyzer and see what it's telling us. You know, in a system like this, we've got the flue gas analyzers, we've got the system heated up. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to take and turn the furnace on and we're going to take a look at it. Now this particular furnace is a, what we call an 80% efficient, so it's running off B-vent gas furnaces, or B-vent venting on it. Now the thing to remember about B-vent is here in our lab, we've actually gone and drilled a hole inside the venting. You are not going to do this in the field because that is now damaging that double wall that goes inside of it. And you say to me, Mark, that's great, but how am I going to do my, how am I going to drill my hole into it? Well, in every one of our systems, and again, because this is a lab, we don't have it hooked up, but the first thing we should always have inside our system is what we call a B2C adapter. And that's where we've got a small piece of single wall pipe that's connected up to our double wall pipe here, or we call it a draft hood adapter. We're going to put that on there first, then our flue gas, our B vent, or a combustible gas venting is going to be on there at that point. Now my, my B to C adapter or my draft hood adapter, that's where I'm going to drill my hole. In this case, I'm going to be here. And really when I talk about this, we say, well, you know, Mark, that's great, but you've drilled a hole in it, you've now damaged it. Flue products can pour out of that. The thing to remember about every B vent or any chimney alone works on a negative draft principle. So unless there's a problem with my venting, no flue gas could ever spill out of there because I'm always going to have that drawing air in as opposed to what's happening with it. So really when it comes to my analyzer, the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to turn my analyzer on and I'm going to let it come up to clear itself out and I always want to do that in free air. Now, now because of what we're doing today, I've taken and I've done that in our system already and I've said okay, I've taken it and cleared it and it's been in free air. So today what we're going to do is we're going to turn our system on and we're going to start to look at what's happening inside our system. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the temperature that's happening inside my system. So I'm going to take my analyzer, I'm going to put it inside, I'm going to try and screw my adapter inside so I get a connection. And again, it's not a huge deal whether or not this, this hole is screwed big enough. But what I want to do is I want to take my, my probe inside of it and I want to hit the back. Now I know I'm all the way in the back, I'm going to bring it back some more and I'm going to tighten it up. Because really where I want that analyzing to happen is about the center of that flue. I want to get that proper flue gases inside. And as you can see right here, I'm already looking at what's happening with my, with my temperatures. I can see that I'm raining about 270, 200, and, and it's climbing. I want to make sure I come to what we call steady state. And what steady state is, is it just means my temperature is not rising and it's not falling. It's mellowed out and it's at that, min it's at that system where it's going to run all the time and I've got that system. So we're going to sit here and wait. Once our furnace reaches steady state, I'm going to be able to start looking at other things. You know, the great thing about a flue gas analyzer is it tells me so many things in this, in this market. You know, I turn around and we all turn around, we have those installers that screw our gas piping in, we get on it with a two foot pipe wrench and we start tightening that gas piping in and we don't use a backup wrench. The downside to that is we can take our, our burners and we can actually kick them out a bit so they're not 
burning down the center of our, of our heat exchanger the proper way. And what we call that is we call that flame quenching. And that's a huge way of producing carbon monoxide that I can't even really see. It's just quenching the flame enough that I'm not getting proper combustion. And yet, I, as, a, as a technician or an installer, I don't see that. I come back a year from now and I see all the carbon or all the, all the aldehydes or everything else that's on the actual vestibule plate, but I don't see that when I'm going on. With my flue gas analyzer, I'm going to see that right away. So I want to make sure we understand all those wonderful things that we see on it. You know, the other thing we can see is whether or not we actually are producing carbon monoxide. Because like anything, if you burn any gaseous fuel, you're going to get carbon monoxide. The question is how well and how quickly we can do it. You know, the best case scenario is a system where I'm going to say I don't see any carbon monoxide. But that's not always going to be the case. So I want to make sure that our carbon monoxide is within regular limits. You know, when we look at the AH, AHRI standard for carbon monoxide, we can actually have over 200 parts per million in the flue gases, and it's considered acceptable. The thing to remember is Lennox, we really want to look at nothing more than 50 parts per million. So we want to make sure our system is below 50 parts per million, and if it's not, we want to know why. And when we talk about that 50 parts per million, it's what we call air-free. And that's really understanding what air-free is. Air-free means that we're going to turn around and we're going to make sure that, you know, when the, one of the things we have in combustion is what we call excess air. And excess air is there because we want to make sure that you're going to have proper combustion no matter what happens. So as a manufacturer, and we all do it, we all put a lot more air in than you actually need in order to get proper combustion. We call that excess air. Well, that excess air doesn't get used. So when we talk about air free, what happens in our combustion analyzer, and as you can see, if you can zoom in here on our analyzer right here in the front, you can see that I, it shows O2 CO air free. Now that means what happens is when I put my analyzer on CO2 air free, it actually does a calculation inside to take out how much excess air I have to take out so now I can see what my, what my CO really is in my flue gases. Because it can be much higher based on what it is. So I'm going to take it now, I'm still starting to balance out there, I'm running about 369 degrees, 370, I'm starting to climb up just a bit there that you can see. So really I've reached now what we call steady state. And that just means my heat exchanger's warmed up, it's actually doing what it's designed to do at this point. So now I can turn around and I can go over and I can look and you can see my O2 is at 20.8, which is what our standard uh, air is going to be inside my system. But you can see now that I'm, my pump is kicked in, I've actually started to reduce the amount of O2 that's in my system. And really my CO air free is starting to climb. So you can see the difference how I've got my O2, which is at 20.9, which is standard room air. That's with my oxygen and my O2 and all the nitrites and everything else that's left in it. And my CO in this case is running 30, 32, somewhere in that range, well below the 50 that we call acceptable, and much lower than the 200 parts per million that AHRI says is acceptable. So in this case, as long as that, those flue gases never reach inside my heat or inside my room, I'm not going to have an issue. But now I could turn around and say, okay, you know, when you say to me, Mark, how do I know, how does it tell me whether or not I have, you know, a, a cracked heat exchanger? Great way of saying it, the fan's turned on right now. If my O2 level was higher than that, I would know that I'm getting excess air somewhere. You know, I can turn around and I look and I flip over to the next one. I can see that my efficiency in this case is 79.5. Wow, it's an 80% efficient furnace, so I'm almost bang on right there. And I've got 70.2 parts of excess air built inside of it. So I'm doing well there without any issues. But we saw when I go back to my CO air free, you can see I'm at about 37, 39, somewhere in that range. But when I go to my CO, my CO2, I'm actually at 6.6. .6, so that's my CO2 level. But look at my carbon monoxide that doesn't take into account that excess air that's inside of it. I'm at 22 here, but my air-free sampling, when I do that calculation or that combustion analyzer does that calculation for me, I can see that I'm much higher at 41 or at 41, 42 parts per million. So again, still well below what we consider acceptable, but we can see. The great thing about it as well is I can look at my temperatures 
And I can see, as you can see here, we're up to 389, 390. I say to myself, but Mark, if I was overfired, I would see that, well, if all of a sudden I saw a higher, higher temperature reading, I would know I've got a problem. Something as simple as an overfiring of the gas valve can cause me to have way too high a temperature in it as well. But I mentioned earlier about the fact that we have that carbon inside the heat exchanger. That carbon inside the heat exchanger will act as an insulator. So if I was to come in and the first thing I do on my maintenance is I check my gas pressure and my gas pressure says, you know, my gas pressure is fine, but I look at my temperature and it's really high, I'm just going to start to question about whether or not I've actually got carbon inside my heat exchanger that's not letting that heat transfer across the system itself. Now as you can see right now in this particular case my furnace has reached temperature for what I want it to be but I was able to see inside my system that I know my heat exchanger is good, I know my gas pressure is set good because my temperature is where I want it to be, I can see that there's no cracks in my heat exchanger because I could watch and I could see that my excess air didn't go crazy inside of it and I can see that my carbon monoxide level is well within the standard that I want it to be. So this combustion an analyzer is something that every technician should do on every new installation to make sure that brand new piece of equipment that you've put in is working correctly and you want to do it on every maintenance because that's the one that's ultimately going to make sure at the end of the day you're safely completing your maintenance and understanding what's happening inside that combustion process. Combustion analysis is a much more in-depth area and you know we at Lennox Learning Solutions offer courses within combustion analysis so I really recommend that if it's something that you really you in intrigues you you really should learn more about it. And that's it for today on Toolbox Tuesday. Thanks for showing up and hope we'll see you shortly.